let's cover the major thalamic nuclei that you might need to know for board certification. I'd start with a thalamus joke, but I'm not sure how to relay it. Just kidding, of course, because the thalamus is the brain's relay station, and it has a bunch of different nuclei with different functions. They're kind of confusing to learn because the same nucleus might be called the dorsomedial or the medial dorsal, depending on which textbook you're reading, but we can do it. Quick reminder about directional terms because you really need to have these down to memorize the thalamic nuclei. Superior always means towards the top of the head, and inferior always means toward the feet. Doesn't matter if we're talking about the brain or the spinal cord. And anterior always means towards the front of the body, and posterior always means towards the back of the body. Then these are the confusing ones because it's different for the brain and spinal cord, but dorsal refers to the superior portion of the brain, and ventral refers to the inferior portion of the brain. Rostral refers to the anterior part of the brain, and caudal refers to the posterior part of the brain. Then lateral means toward the sides, and medial means toward the middle. The thalamic nuclei are organized into different groups, lateral, medial, and anterior, but you can also organize them by function. Let's start by learning the thalamic nuclei with sensory functions. Let's start with these two that say VPL and VPM. VPL stands for ventral posterior lateral, and it relays somatosensory spinal inputs to the cortex, including information about pressure, proprioception, or awareness of body position, and pain. I remember that this one is related to the spinothalamic tract because LP stands for lumbar puncture and that makes me think of the spine. But it's PL not LP. I know but like I said these things all have a million different names so you can't just memorize them in a certain order or you're gonna get all mixed up on the actual test when the letters are out of order. The main inputs are the medial lumniscus and the spinothalamic tract. The main outputs are the somatosensory cortex. The ventral posteromedial nucleus, or VPM, relays somatosensory cranial nerve inputs and taste to the cortex. The PM and VPM makes me think of PM, like private messaging, when people are like, oh, PM me on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. So I picture someone PMing someone else to ask them out for food. Do you want to go eat food? And that reminds me that the VPM has to do with taste. So the main inputs are the trigeminal lumniscus the trigeminothalamic tract, and taste inputs, and the main outputs are somatosensory and taste cortex. Moving on to the medial geniculate and the lateral geniculate, sometimes these are called body and sometimes they're called nucleus, so it could be MGB or MGN. You basically want to remember that lateral is vision and medial is auditory. I remember this by L is for looking, M is for media or music or MP3. Also, if you watched my video about the neuroanatomy of vision, you'll remember that we already learned about the LGN. It's part of that geniculostriate pathway that's important for visual perception. And I remember that because gen in geniculostriate reminds me of generations and older generations who need their glasses to see. So the main input is the retina and the main output is the primary visual cortex. And for the medial geniculate nucleus, the main input is the inferior colliculus and the main output is the primary auditory cortex. Now let's move on to the thalamic nuclei with motor or limbic functions. The ventral lateral and ventral anterior thalamic nuclei both have to do with motor functions. VL reminds me of violin, like punching and kicking and motor movements. They don't necessarily have to be violent movements, but that's how I remember it. And VA stands for Veterans Administration, which reminds me of soldiers marching, and again, that reminds me that it's for motor functions. The ants go marching one by one. Hoorah! Hoorah! Both of these have the same inputs, which are the substantia nigra pars reticulata, internal global pallidus, and deep cerebellar nuclei. The main outputs for the ventral lateral are the motor, premotor, and supplementary motor cortex. And the ventral anterior has widespread outputs to the frontal lobe, including the prefrontal, premotor, motor, and supplementary motor cortex. Now look at this picture and find the anterior and the lateral dorsal, also called the dorsal lateral nucleus. These both have limbic functions. If you watched my video on the neuroanatomy of memory, you already learned about the anterior thalamus. The anterior thalamus is the anteater in my hippo story that helps me remember the medial hippocampal circuit. 
You can watch that video, but basically the story goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a hippopotamus. Mammals like him have big bodies. They get that way by using a fork to eat a lot. In this story, the hippo travels along a pathway with all the other mammals until he gets to the anteater. I mean, the anterior thalamus. Then he sings a song to all the other hippos. The lateral dorsal or dorsal lateral nucleus is closely related and works with the anterior thalamus. So just remember those two together and remember that LD stands for limbic domain. And finally, let's cover some other thalamic nuclei. First, look at the pulvener. The pulvener is largely related to visual processing and helps us pay attention to visual cues. I remember this by thinking of a bully who wants to pulverize me, so I pay attention to visual cues to avoid getting pulverized. And again, we already learned about this in the Neuroanatomy of Vision video. The pulvener is part of the tectopulvener system, which is part of the other visual pathway, the extrastriate or extrageniculate pathway. And we already learned about the dorsomedial or mediodorsal thalamus in the Neuroanatomy of Memory video. The dorsomedial thalamus is the door in my story that helps me remember the lateral memory circuit involving the amygdala. You can watch that video, but basically the story goes like this. Sometimes when you're super emotional, you feel like you're in some kind of fugue state, just traveling along in this state of fugue. That is, until you open the door to the thalamus, the sensory relay station that brings you back to your senses. As you return to your senses, you see an orb in front of you, and you think, it must be the spirit of your uncle. So then you start to cry again, because you miss your uncle, which is that amygdala acting up again. The intralaminar nuclei have two main functions, maintaining alertness and consciousness, and they're a motor relay for the basal ganglia and cerebellum. I remember this by thinking about lambs. Laminar makes me think of lambs, which are baby sheep, and baby sheep sleep a lot because they're babies, and they move a lot when they are awake, just like human babies. And finally, the reticular nucleus helps regulate all the other thalamic nuclei. What a cop-out, it doesn't even have its own function. Reticular regulates, that's how I remember it. Should I make more free study videos? Hit like if you want more.